Welcome everyone to another episode of The Soap. My name's Az. Tonight with me I have got Cav. Very special appearance. We haven't heard him for a while, but hopefully we'll be hearing a bit more of him. So welcome, Cav. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Great to hear your voice on the podcast again. And as always, I've got Dan by my side here as well in the podcast. So good evening, Dan. Good evening. (laughs) All right. So we thought it might be a good time to talk a little hearthstone. Hearthstone? Correct me if I'm wrong. Which is the correct spelling? And even pronunciation, maybe. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> you know, I really don't mind either one. I think technically it's a hearthstone, but of course, mm-hmm. saying that though, with my accent, I just never know whether I'm saying things right or wrong anyway. So no, I, don't, I don't know. Your accent makes everything sound a little bit sexy, Kev. So you know, it's all good. <laughs> I'm not sure whether I should be disturbed by that or be happy with that, but uh... slightly offended, perhaps. <laughs> Anyway, moving on, moving on. We are going to talk about the uh, free-to-play trading card game Hearthstone. And uh, we have our resident expert, Cav. There's a new update about to drop and there's some crazy stuff coming along with that as well. So without any further ado, Cav, I might throw it over to you and get you just to give us a quick background on Hearthstone and what it involves, where it came from, and how do you play it? Okay, thanks for that, As Yes, it's uh, good to be back, as you mentioned. Haven't been on the podcast for quite a while, but as uh, you said, I tend to come on a bit more in the future but uh, yeah Hearthstone is I suppose the thing that I do I do love playing the game it's been around since 2014 and it I suppose it's based on the MMORPG World of Warcraft which again is in turn based on the old Warcraft series you know the uh, the old game what do you call it RTS games from back in the day now Hearthstone as you said is a a free to play and I put free to play in quotation marks (laughs) (laughs) free to play it's a basically a turn based card game whereby you construct your cards and then basically face off an opponent from there and pick your hero. You construct your deck of cards and go against another opponent. And then you can either play the ladder match, I suppose, if you will, and or unranked gameplay, depending on which one you prefer. You can make your way up the ladder or down the ladder, depending on how you look at it. And, uh, you get card packs and rewards and so on as you go, as you progress throughout the month. Yeah, as I said, I, I said free to play because, you know, in quotation marks, simply because you don't pay anything to play the game. However, over time, to remain competitive, you probably find that it helps to purchase cards, some of the card packs to help you progress a bit better. Now, you can, uh, as you play the games, if you win against your opponents, after you win three games, you get a coin, or ten coins rather. And then with those gold coins, you can then build it up, and eventually you can buy a pack of cards, which cost 100 coins per pack of four, I believe. Then you can build up your deck that way, although that's the slow way to do it. Now, you could throw your money at Blizzard. Now, Blizzard is the uh, uh, development company that makes the game. Now, you can uh, buy the packs from them and you can throw a lot of money to it. And you can build up your packs a lot quicker, become more competitive and have at it, really. It's a fantastic game. I think the important thing there is that you have the option of paying to do it quicker, but it's not really an advantage if you are someone that plays a game constantly. If you're playing it every single day, you have a couple of games, then you will, over time, earn all those cards that you could pay for. The payment is more so to do it a lot quicker, but not necessarily a way to win and get abilities that other people can't. And the other thing there is that you do get quests that will allow you to unlock a lot more packs quickly. In particular, there was recently an event where you got extra packs along with the quests. Cav, can you tell us a bit more about that and what was important about why they did it? Yes. Now, with uh, the way the Hearthstone works is that every year, uh, there's usually about, depending on how they do it, there's usually about three expansions per year. Uh, They've actually split the competitive matchups basically into two sections the standard game and the wild game now in the wild mode of the game you can pick any cards from the entire roster of uh, of all the cards available uh, in the game 
whereby in the standard game you only are uh, allowed a uh, certain amount of expansions the approximately two years worth of cards so for example at the moment we are about to finish what they consider the year of the mammoth which is just about to finish now and then it's the year of the raven is about to start now once we move into the year of the raven there are st- getting rid of i believe well they're only they're shifting it along so that uh, some of the older expansions are actually being phased out into the wild decks do you have what are going to be the new decks for the year of the raven i believe obviously the new expansion dropping out in the next couple of days for those listening it'll already be out but yes. uh, that'll be one of the current packs there's a couple of other expansions currently in it can you tell us more about them can i just ask a question about the year of the raven sorry to interrupt guys no go for it now blizzard would be really really off the mark if they didn't put a John Snow card in there and when you play him he just does nothing because he doesn't know anything <laughs> you know nothing John Snow now it is free to play and it's competitive so you play online matches against other people don't you it's not just the computer it's optional it, it is optional in the sense that you can play just against the computer. If that's what you want to do. You can also play this, the solo matchup or the solo adventures, which you're just playing up with some of the bosses of the different expansions. For example, in the previous expansion just gone, Cobots and Catacombs, which introduced one of the solo adventures, which was uh, the uh, dungeon run, whereby you faced some of the bosses and then you moved up the ranks and then you you unlocked your heroes the problem with that one is that there's really no rewards for it so it's a fantastic game mod and a lot of people enjoyed it It just has no rewards to it so in the end it's kind of uh there's no point to it okay Good for practice, though. Oh yeah, it's good. For, good for practice. Yeah, and especially if you if you don't want to play the competitive match or you just want to try something new, you could certainly play that mod. Or if you want to get more of a challenge, you play against uh, real people all, all over the world. Okay, and you can also play it on just about everything known to man as well, can't you? Yes. Play it on your PC, on your tablet, iPhones, Android phones, all that sort of stuff. So you can take it with you. Correct. When it first came out, obviously it started on the uh, the Windows and then the Mac o- operating system. But then eventually they introduced it on iOS devices, you know, your iPhones, iPads, and then mm-hmm. as well as your Android devices. So you can take it anywhere with you. As long as you've got an internet connection, you can play it anywhere. And there was an advantage every time you logged into a new form, it would actually give you a free pack of cards to recognize that you were playing on different mediums. Oh, nice. Do you know if it still does that? Because I haven't played it on an Android. So if I could jump on an Android, I could get a free pack maybe. <laughs> I wonder. Maybe you can uh, give that a try and post <laughs> it in the comments. <laughs> I might actually do that. Yes. Now, every time that they uh, they change over to to the new, I suppose, the new year, and as I said, we're going to the uh, year of the raven here. (coughs) What happens is that they usually have some sort of an event that that builds the excitement. And the event we just went through was that uh, you could play your uh, your quests quest cards and then as you're playing your quests which you normally do daily anyway you get rewarded with uh, extra packs now some of those packs were from the from past expansions but you also got new packs which you cannot unlock yet but are from the upcoming expansion which is coming out on the 12th of april american daytime uh, which i believe will be on the 13th for us here in australia that event actually gained me quite a lot of packs actually it was actually quite an exciting event you could just log in there get packs and that actually helped you build up better games you know you don't have to spend the money you don't have to spend the coin you just got it free just by completing completing the your normal daily quests which is uh pretty good and then uh, as i said the new expansion the new expansion is called the witchwood which is coming out on the 12th And that also introduces a new set of cards. I believe it's introducing 135 new cards. Do you know what the background of Witchwood is? Is there a specific reason they've gone this theme? What does it come from? Yes. Now, with every expansion, they always come up with a new new theme and they always have reasons for the new theme. But this one, I believe it's in regards to the city of Gionaeus. For those who are interested or are familiar with uh, World of Warcraft, the city of Gionaeus is an alliance city which has got a curse upon it. Uh, whereby the inhabitants are afflicted by the curse of the worgen. So think of werewolves, if, if you will. That's the original theme, that is the city of Gionaeus. But outside of the city of Gionaeus is a forest. And in that forest is, I suppose, a witch. And the witch is taking over the forest and the 
woodland animals uh, fighting against those people from the city of Guionaeus. Yeah, from there, it's just really, I suppose it's a monster-themed uh, expansion. Bit of a gothic horror kind of sort of, you know... Hansel and Gretel. More, yeah, Hansel and Gretel, you know, uh, witches and werewolves, that kind of thing. And uh, with it also comes some new mechanics which are being introduced in the game. For those who are familiar with uh, Hearthstone, you know that uh, certain cards have got certain traits and, uh, I suppose, mechanics. Now, one of the new mechanics that is being introduced is called an Echo card. So whereby it's a card you play once, but once you play it, you can also play it multiple times depending on how many, how much mana you've got. So it leaves a copy in your hand. So it leaves a copy in your hand, yes, yeah, so you can play it again. So for example, a card you would normally play at uh, turn two, if it's got uh, two mana, you can play it at turn two. Just play it once and therefore you got uh, something to play there. You can alternatively, at turn 4, you can play twice. At turn 6, you play it three times. At turn 8, you can play it four times, which would obviously give you a big advantage to play it later in the game. Now, if you get a modifier on that card, so once you play it, say it's got the basic stats of two attack and two health, and you have something on the board that will automatically give it an extra three attack or something like that will the cards in your hand then get those uh, modifiers or will they be the basic stats of the card no the basic stats of the card and then the modifiers get applied when you play it on the uh, when you play it in when you bring it into play the card itself would have the basic stats on it it kind of reminds me now this whole echo thing of um way back in the day i don't know if anyone remembers it there's a game called magic which was one of the well probably not one of the first trading card games but certainly one of the one, first ones that became popular in um western society and there was very similar cards and reversals and you know re-triggers as well so maybe they're sort of looking at that, I mean, apparently there's over almost 1,700 cards now, and Hearthstone's been running for, for what do you say, about four years. Yeah. Do you think that this is enough to keep it fresh all of the time, like these expansions, or, or do, you, do you see it sort of, you know, petering out and going by the wayside? Personally, I think uh, just like Magic does, if you look at the history of Magic, that's a game that's never died out. In towns, there is group meetings new packs of cards are bought constantly and they have new expansions that constantly change the way it is magic is essentially the physical version of hearthstone you know they magic does have online versions that you can buy but it doesn't really push into that realm as much whereas hearthstone only lives in the digital realm it doesn't have a physical form so they're very similar from a generalized view obviously they do play differently and they have quite different followings but if magic can last as long as magic's done and it also follows the same principles of changing expansions which change the rules and what cards you can take i think that hearthstone by following that same you know tried and tested method there's no way that it could fail as long as they make sure that they're testing everything before they release it yeah making it playable i guess and and not just sort of rehashing the same old thing i'm actually going to be spending my weekend frantically pulling my house apart looking for my original deck of magic cards i had a chat to arthur and he told me how about how much some of those are worth now so that's really cool just uh on that note cav obviously it's a trading card game so some cards are rarer than others is there a like a trading or a monetary sort of value placed on cards and they're they're better like more expensive cards than others and just on that as well you mentioned that they sort of like you know after two years kind of bench the cards and you don't use them anymore in in normal gameplay if you had a legendary card from say the first season or first year of hearthstone would you still be able to use it would it still be worth money or could you still play it or is it just been nerfed into the the wild sort of side of the game now generally speaking uh if they're from the original game itself when it first came out most of those cards most of the original cards don't generally get benched so to speak some of those are still playable uh you can still play them in the standard mode but a lot of the uh, as they came out with the new expansions over time they usually bench them they put them into the wild they're not worth any sort of monetary value as such so you can't trade it with with uh, another person so to speak but you can disenchant them so you can burn them so to speak and that will give you coins or they'll give you dust rather which you can then use to construct new cards if that's what you're wanting to do you can certainly do that 
with a wild game mod, although the old cards are being benched, as you said, they're just uh, rotated out of the standard game, you can still play them in the wild format as per normal. So you, they don't become useless. You can still just play them in the wild mode. Now, some people prefer playing the standard game. If they want, you know, they want just, you know, the standard play. They want everything to be nice and new and see what's going on out there, in, you know. In, but some people just like the craziness of being able to play any sort of deck, you know, constructing anything and everything. So in wild, you can construct decks from, from all the way back to when the Hearthstone first came out. All the expansions, you can just choose, pick and choose, construct your deck from that. And you can still make those cards which uh, have been benched. You can still use those. So in the sense, you don't actually lose any value in that sense. Well, that's a good mechanic, I think, on Blizzard's part. And I mean, Blizzard's known for good mechanics. <laughs> <Stuck Yeah. up. coughs> I think that's a really good way to do it. So you said that they're not really worth anything. I mean, are the cards worth real money? Have you got some expensive cards? The answer to that one is simple. And no, they're not really worth any monetary value <laughs> at all. But saying that, though, if you're able to construct some of those uh, legendary uh, legendary cards, if you will, then yeah, they cost more dust, they cost more coins to get, and they're definitely valuable, and they do certainly have more gameplay value, if you will, but no actual monetary value as such. Essentially, they're not valuable to other people in terms of someone else looking at your deck, they can't get any value out of it. If they stole your deck, there's nothing to do with it. But for you personally, there is a monetary value in earning or crafting your own cards. And it comes down to if you want to collect everything or if you just want the most competitive deck. There is also the gold versions of cards if you want to look pretty when everyone else is uh, playing against you. And there's no advantage to having a gold version of a card except for the fact that it looks better. The image is normally animated as opposed to a static picture for when you play the cards. And when you do disenchant them for dust to build other cards, you actually get more dust out of them. But in the flip side, it also costs you more dust to make a gold card. So to make a gold deck compared to a normal deck would cost you twice as much easily. No, there's not. There's no trading scene, unfortunately. Uh, or maybe that's fortunate. I don't know. Well, yeah, looking at other free-to-play games, you know, like CSGO skins and Fortnite and some of those other free-to-plays where you can buy and trade and, you know, there was big hullabaloo about the guns in CSGO and how uh, UK, I think it was, ruled it as actual gambling so kids couldn't do it anymore. Perhaps it is a good idea that you, you just got to keep your deck to yourself. Do you have any legendary cards? Like, Is it something they're easy to get or, is, as Dan said, is there a considerable time and money sort of um, dump into getting one of those Yeah, the cards. legendary cards cost more, obviously, if you want to construct them. And they're also a lot uh, rarer when, you, when you're trying to get them. When you open up your pack of cards... I believe on average it's one every ten packs a card that you'll get a legendary on average obviously you could get two and five packs or you might take you 30 packs to get one but i believe the average is approximately one per every 10 packs yeah i'm usually not that lucky especially with the legendaries i, I tend to yeah i suppose mine tends i do i do open quite a lot of cards i do get quite a number in, in throughout the months and all that stuff and mine seems to average out about probably one in 15 cards uh, fifth, one in 15 packs on average but that's the way i have found it because i uh, i usually tend if i decide i want to sink some money into it i'll either buy a 15 pack or i'll buy a 25 pack or something like that uh, i tend to find that if i buy a 15 pack i usually get probably one legendary at least one in those 15 pack maybe two if i'm lucky but generally it's about one in every 15 that i tend to get okay so you, you have a few then oh yeah i've got quite a quite a lot actually um right. but of course uh, some of them are useful if you want to uh, use them but if you find that they're not useful you just burn them construct others yes but pretty much everybody and anybody should have a number of uh, legendaries in their packs and i mean they're not overly expensive i've just looked up the blizzard website here this is probably an american it's about 25 bucks for a 15 pack of cards would that be about right cav 15 pack of cards yeah that'll be about right about 20 yeah they come in two, seven, fifteen, forty, and sixty pack flavors. So I mean, you can you can sink as little as four bucks, or as much as you know, nearly ninety dollars into the game at a time. So it depends on how much you want to play it. But 
Let's sort of move away from that for a little bit. Now, I believe there's some classes in Hearthstone as well. So you've got like your fighter, your mage, your rogue, possibly a healer. When you yeah. buy a card pack, do you get just class-specific cards or do you get useless ones if you're a mage? Do you get the fighter's cards or the, the thief's cards? Is it just completely random? Uh, yeah, you're right. I mean, there are the different classes in Hearthstone. When you're buying or when you open a pack of cards, the cards themselves are random. So you don't select that, I want to, I want to get the rogues car, uh, pack, I want to get the mage pack, I want to get the warrior pack. You just get them and they're all randomized. Once once you open them, they will just obviously be random cards and then you luck is basically what it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's but a I luck of the draw. It, yeah, and if you got those cards that were useless, like you know, for the rogue or, or the fighter, if you were the mage, then you could just burn them and get extra dust and stuff. And Yes, and then you can look to build your own from there, correct? Well, look, I did want to quickly draw on something Dan actually sent me earlier in the week uh, when he was a bit G'd up for this new drop, and it was about the craziest card that's ever come out. And we'll talk a little bit about the game mechanics, but we won't bore everyone. So apparently there's a card called the Shutter Walk that's coming in this new expansion. I don't know if you guys have heard about it. Dan, obviously you have. You sent me the <laughs> link. But Cav, have you heard about this one? <laughs> yes, I had the, uh, the opportunity to have a look at this one. Yeah, this one is a bit of a, a crazy, crazy card. I really don't know how this is going to work. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Dan, do you want to talk about it? Because you seem to have looked at it a bit more than I have. Yeah, so I guess the first thing is it's a shaman class card which means only the shaman class will be able to play this so the other eight classes won't have a chance to use it at all it's a nine cost card which means that it's at the end of a game or well not the end but towards the later stages of the game that this card would be played the important thing for it is not the stats it's attack or defense or anything like that but the ability that it has. So reading it from the card, it's Battle Cry, which is a ability that is played or activates when your card is played. It's Battle Cry is repeat all other Battle Cries from cards you played this game. Targets chosen randomly. So essentially, if you'd played eight cards earlier that all had a Battle Cry, when you play this card, it will play all eight of those Battle Cries again at the time <laughs> of playing it. Now, most Battle Cries are normally going to be good for you there are examples where a battle cry may hurt you the warlocks for example often when they play a card the stats will be higher but it will hurt the player for shamans most of the time this should always be a positive effect which means once it gets played there should be a lot of positive effects suddenly played on your all your cards i think the important thing there is you will want to have other minions on the board otherwise the battle cry is going to go nowhere Okay, so it's like the tactical nuke of Hearthstone, really. Correct, and it reminds me of, uh, I think we had a chat about this on earlier on, it reminds me of the, the Yogg-Saron card which came out a while back as well. That particular one had a, say, a similar kind of craziness to it, in that uh, it had a battle cry whereby it casts a random spell for each spell that you have cast throughout the game. So as a mage, you're obviously casting a lot of spells throughout the game. So if you happen to cast like five, six, seven, ten ca spells, it will then cast randomly ten or however many spells you've cast, and it targets things randomly. So it's kind of insane, crazy, all sorts of craziness ensues, and sometimes it will benefit you, but sometimes it can work against you. So if you see that, uh, look, I have, <laughs> uh, I've run out of any other rational play I can do, I I'm backed in a corner. You just play that and hope for the best. And, and nuke every fucker from space. Really, uh, exactly. It? <laughs> <It's>, um, <laughs> I think that's a really cool idea that yeah, Blizzard are dropping these like just randomly overpowered, crazy fuck-off cards into the game. I think it's a really good idea. It keeps it fresh. And it's like, so you'd be just playing along in a new expansion, you know, busting witches and werewolves, and then all of a sudden, you know, out it comes. And then bam, 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 all of these spells and battle cries trigger at once. Now, I'm going to show my age here, but it reminds me of Final Fantasy VII towards the end of the game. You've got this summon, and everyone knows played Final Fantasy, you know, summon is where you, you summon a massive monster to fight for you, and it was called Knights of the Round. And it basically summoned King Arthur and his 12 Knights of the Round Table, and each one did a different status damage. So one was fire, one was water, and it went through all of the Final Fantasy statuses. And the animation, even then, back on the PlayStation, was approximately six minutes long as they all came along and did their attack. 
and then you could link those attacks to other magic. So, you know, if your hit, hit points got down below 25%, you could automatically trigger the Knights of the Round to go off. Or if you got killed, there was another magic called the Phoenix magic. So if you got killed, you'd be resurrected just automatically because of the, the magic you had. But then you could link another magic to that. So you'd link a repeat and then you'd put Knights of the Round on. If anyone's really bored and got a couple of hours to kill, go online to YouTube and have a look at Final Fantasy VII Ruby or Ultimate Weapon Fight and you'll see some of the greatest uses of linked magic ever. But I digress. I really actually want to see one of these things go off in Hearthstone. I've watched Cav play it heaps and you, the cards fly back and forward and, and you know, damage is done. I'd love to just see random magic effects just hitting everyone on the board, head in hand, going, oh no, and then all of a sudden it's beneficial and you're like, oh, yay, excellent. <laughs> and then it's bad again and then... Hey, hey. And how long it could go on. Because you would be able to, say, play one of these guys, and if you happen to have two in your deck, you could play him a couple of turns down, and then you'd repeat him. Is that how it would work? Well, no. Because what happens is that this is what you consider a legendary card. Ah, now, you right. can only have one of those in your deck. Oh. Uh, so you can only use it once, unless you're lucky enough to have some of the spells which allow you to duplicate your cards. Like uh, there are some mage spells which allow you to duplicate a card and then, yeah, you could duplicate that one and then have that. But if that would only work if you were... Obviously, it wouldn't work for you as a mage because you can't have that particular card. But as a priest, for example, you could steal the card from your opponent and then you could also use that card to your advantage rather than they have it work against you. So... <laughs> There are way, means and ways you can use it uh, by if you're a different class other than a shaman. But generally speaking, only shamans can have that. And I'm sure there's ways to duplicate that if you need to. Excellent. Well, I look forward to hearing your cries of triumph and anguish when that finally does drop and you get one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's, so... it's, it's interesting. In, in this particular pack, uh, in this particular expansion, the, um, the shamans are getting a lot of love for some unknown reason. Okay. Because they also, normally you also, like a couple of expansions back, they, uh, Blizzard introduced what they call a, um, call a legendary hero for your class. So right. each each class had a legendary hero. Once you play that hero on uh, on the on your turn, usually turn five, six, nine, whatever, depending on your class, it then turned your hero into that particular legendary hero, and then you could do special effects throughout. Now in this particular one, they've only introduced one legendary hero, which is a shaman for the shaman class. All the other classes don't get a legendary hero for this particular expansion, and this one is Hagasa the Witch. It's a legendary hero. It costs eight mana, and the battle cry on that one is that it does three damage to all minions on the deck, all the minions on play, rather. So that could help you clear the board if you're struggling a bit, depending on what you're facing. But uh, that's a lot of love for the shamans. I'm sure there's a reasoning behind it. Really, really good for the shamans. So in the world, in the Warcraft universe, shamans are mostly trolls, are they not? Or you know, like orc races? Or am I wrong? No, no, no not. not quite wrong back in the day when uh, <laughs> not, when 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 uh, warcraft first came out back in uh, 2000 and, what was it 2004 2005 world of warcraft that is a lot of the shamans tended to be orcs they were the i suppose the horde only the horde could have the shaman class but over time when blizzard wanting to make things balanced and whatever they wanted to do they actually uh, allowed a lot more races to be uh, shamans i think originally it was the trolls yeah, I think it was, it was trolls, possibly the orcs as well, were the shamans back in the day. And then, uh, but since then, it's expanded. You you can get dwarves as shamans. You can get um, Draenei. Draenei are also shamans. Yeah, correct. In response to that, I think Blizzard also gave the paladin class to the horde. But again, we digress from the main topic here. <laughs> I was just gonna make a maybe Blizzard is just feeding the trolls joke. You know nothing, Jon Snow. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> that's fair enough. Ask. Fair anyway. enough. Suppose with with this one, just like in the last expansion, Cobots and Catacombs, whereby they introduced the dungeon run. This one introduces another single player mode. This one is called Monster Hunt. Uh, this one introduces four different hero classes that you can play, 
And then with those, you can then, I suppose, go on a, a solo adventure of hunting monsters. Now, that one, you, you face off different dungeon, uh, sorry, different bosses, and then you make your way through that. And again, this one, I'm not sure if you're going to get any rewards for it, just like dungeon runs. I don't think you're going to get any rewards for it. But I think it's just a, an aside, you know, a, a good, fun solo adventure you can play around with you uh, on your own time, I suppose. This one will come out two weeks after the expansion comes out. Now, the expansion coming out on the 12th of April. So this will be coming out two weeks later. For the main mod itself, the introduction of the Year of the Raven. Three of the cards which have been, I uh, suppose, a mainstay in the standard mod will be shuffled out and they'll be going they'll actually be no longer playable in standard mode. Now, this includes the ice block for the mages. Now, this card is brilliant for the mages, and I think it's going to be missed terribly by us mages. This card allowed you so that if you're, if you're about to take a uh, fatal blow which will kill you, it would actually stop that fatal blow, and you'd actually get another turn to survive that blow, and then give you the opportunity to maybe even win it uh, on the next turn. Now, losing that card, as I said, would change the way mages play their decks. So I think that's going to introduce some interesting constructions of new decks for the mages. Another one is the Cold Light or Oracle, which was another mainstay, especially for the uh, rogues. Again, that will make a lot of changes for the way how the rogues play, because they're going to be losing that card. And then the Morton Giant, which is another card which used to be... Currently, it's a 25-mana card. It costs one less for each damage you do as a hero. Oh, sorry, for each damage you take. So if you've got damaged by 20 for 25 over the course of the play that card would then cost you absolutely nothing and it was an 8-8 giant which is could do insane amounts of damage hard to kill do you see that card much at the level you're playing at cav because you're playing a lot higher level than i am in the area that i play around which is normally about the 20 mark i normally just sit there to be comfortable i don't see that card very often at all no i, I do occasionally see it especially with some of the uh, warlock i think that's about the only class i've i see occasionally play it but it's very, very rare. And I believe they're going to reduce the cost of it from 25 down to 20 mana. But again, it's not going to be in the standard mode anymore. So that's gone. So I'd say you don't want to see that again. Uh, unless you're playing the wild. So those, yeah. The modern giant, I don't think many people will miss that. The cord like oracle, a lot of people will miss that. As well as the uh, ice, ice block for the mages. 135 uh, new cards coming in. As I said, we mentioned I mentioned earlier on the different new mechanics that are coming in. The echo card, which I mentioned, an example of that echo card whereby you could play multiple time, the card multiple times. The phantom militia, for example, which is a three mana card with two health and four attack. So you could then play that at turn three, just as a one off. You can play it at turn three, or you can wait for turn six and turn uh, or turn nine. Whereby at 10.6 you can play it twice, at 10.9 obviously you can play it three times. So that is definitely a good one for you. Or the uh, legendary one, which is, this one is a rogue one, a warpath, which is a two mana spell. But it's a two mana card, uh, so, no sorry, it's a three mana card, 2-2. Two, two. It's got battle cry whereby it does damage, one damage to all minions. So if you play it on 10.3, it would then do one damage to all the minions. If you play it again on 10.6, it would do another damage. At 10.9, it would do more damage, if you know what I mean. So you could clear the board by playing this card three times, which is absolutely brilliant. So Blizzard's really sort of mixing it up for those players that do play competitively that have sort of got their attacks and their card decks built very, very seriously and counter everything. This is really going to throw a cat amongst the pigeons and keep it fresh. So yes. that's what I was saying before is you think it's going to sort of, you know, get a bit stale, but this sort of mechanic will definitely keep it fresh. Correct. I mean, yeah, I mean, with games, as you're talking about magic, you know, bringing, introducing new and uh, new cards to make it fresh. Uh, same thing with World of Warcraft itself, for example. You know, it's a game that uh, you're always doing the same things, but with, they introduce new things, new expansions to make it more interesting, make it different. Same thing with this one, the new expansions and new mechanics, make it fresh, make it more interesting for everybody. I think it will, it's a kind of game that will keep on going and going as long as they keep it relevant and fresh. So, all right, let's get your final final word then with the new expansion coming what do you think is going to be the class to play if you're a new player coming in now which is going to be the one to beat ah this one is an interesting one 
I haven't actually gone through to see which one is going to be the best class to play. And again, that will all depend on what fun and interesting decks are created out there. At the moment, the Warlock, the Cube Lock is actually doing very, very well. So I don't know how that's going to impact them. A lot of these cards, as I said, are very Shaman-centric. So I think the Shaman will actually come into play. Because the Shaman hasn't been very competitive over the last couple of uh, seasons. So it should be interesting to see how they come out of this one. And I think mage will probably be the biggest loser as far as i can see but again i'll have to go through all the cards and see what happens and then usually after about a week or two you things start shaking up and you can usually see how the trend goes but uh, we'll soon find out which one uh, comes out the winner well excellent we might have to have you back in a couple of weeks and see uh what your predictions are if they've come true and whether the shaman's going to be the uh, tactical nuking firebombing motherfucker that we all hope he is with that new card <laughs> I wanted to just quickly give Dan some props as well, moving away from Hearthstone. Dan, I just wanted to say that your episode on retro game collecting with um, <laughs> Greg last week was absolutely awesome. It's a shame I couldn't be there with you guys, but definitely really good content, and I thought that it was really good that uh, we got another view other than just my view on retro consoles on the soap for once. <laughs> it was a very different episode because I did that one on the road, which meant we didn't have the quieter environment, which uh, really impacted the editing. But to have Greg on there, Greg is someone who's very passionate and knows exactly what he's talking about. And the entire time that we were doing that episode, we were looking at everything that he has up on display and there's a lot of consoles. It's something that you would have spent uh, many hours looking over and yeah, we'll... Uh, leave viewers minds as to what else you would have been doing in front of those consoles <laughs> and i did have a little bit of an ulterior motive actually in mentioning that dan i've actually ordered a very very special case for my own raspberry pi called a nez pi case which is basically very similar to the mini nes case but made by a third party company and has room to fit the raspberry pi in i really hope that we'll get together and we'll do a video on that one as well so keep your eyes out for that that will appear on the youtube channel hopefully very very soon as soon as it arrives from china <laughs> Well, guys, thank you so much for listening, and it's been a pleasure to have the wonderful, sexy, low-down tones of Cav oh, yeah. on the podcast again. We will get him back real soon. Thank you for learning all about Hearthstone. We hope to hear you again real soon, same place. So don't forget to uh, subscribe on YouTube, like our channels, like our socials, get onto our Reddit. have got a massive Reddit there as well with some really great subreddits about what you guys might like to hear. So drop us a line there, drop us a line on Facey, Twitter, wherever else you get your social media fix from. So thank you very much, guys, for joining us tonight. So thank you, Kev. Oh, no problem, guys. And thanks for the invite. And uh, as I said, I'll uh, definitely be back for more excellent sounds good to me and thank you as always dan it's been a pleasure no worries i would like to say with the reddit side of things i'm always on the reddit if anyone wants to drop a comment in there i'll probably have a response back to you within a couple of hours at most so jump on there start some chat I love hearing from people and love getting involved with the community awesome thanks very much guys but winter is coming can we just have like a minute of silence after you say that just edited it in to give the audience a chance to just look